What do we think of the quote, destined for Hollywood? We imagine fame, glitz and glamour, beautiful sunshine and sandy white beaches. We don't think of wet, cold, windy fields in the middle of Ireland. But it's here our story starts. In 1989 on the shores of Belfast, Rosie MacDonald and Jerry McElroy gave birth to their only child, Rory. The pair was not rich but vowed to give everything they had to their precious son. They were a working class family and both had several jobs, working around the clock just to keep food on the table and for Rory to have nice things. In Jerry's pastime, he'd play golf at the Hollywood Golf Club just down the road. Before Rory and probably having more money and more time, Jerry played to a scratch handicap, so good golf was in the genes. At age two and barely being able to feed himself, Jerry bought Rory a present. It was a little golf club, and little did he know at the time, this was the start of history. Jerry showed little Rose how to grip the golf club, and then sent him off to bed. Being obsessed with his new present, Rory fell asleep holding his golf club. When Jerry pulled back the covers, Little Rory was holding the golf club with a perfect grip. His mum and dad couldn't keep that club out of his hands, and at age two was already hitting 40 yard drives. After many a broken plant pot and numerous balls in the neighbor's gardens, Rory now wanted to join a golf club. At age seven, Rory was the youngest golfer at the club, and still the youngest ever to join to this date. Rory was never rushed into golf. If anything, he was the one dragging his dad down to the course every day. It was here at the golf club Rory met childhood and still to this day golf coach Michael Bannon. A lot of what Rory was doing was natural, so Michael was just there to guide him on his golf journey and tweak things along the way. By age nine and now showing incredible potential, Rory traveled to Florida to play the under 10s world championship. His parents were putting everything on the line here and little did Rory know there was a lot of pressure on his head. But not knowing any pressure and enjoying his golf, at age nine, Rory won. Back home, the media went mad. He was invited onto national TV and was now tipped to be the next biggest thing in golf. Not just in Northern Ireland, but the world. At age 10, he'd already had his first hole in one, something most golfers never achieve. After playing all across Europe his whole childhood, Rory was now coming to the end of his high school days. After impressing representing Europe at the 2004 Junior Ryder Cup, where Rory helped Europe to a foreign soil victory. At age 15, he signed a letter of intent to play collegiate golf at East Tennessee State University. Back in Ireland, Rory was competing again. He became the youngest ever winner of both the West of Ireland Championship and the Irish Close Championship, and retained both the following year. With the two wins, Rory was at a crossroads so early on in his life. He knew what he wanted to do, and everybody knew what he was going to be. He sat down with his parents to discuss his future, and it was quite clear where this was going. Rory didn't want to waste any time going to college. He wanted to carry on playing amateur golf in Europe, and after very little thought, he decided to forego his golf scholarship. Weeks later, McElroy shot a new competitive course record score of 61 on the Dunluce links of Royal Port Rush Golf Club. He'd been invited to the British Masters for experience shortly after turning 16 just to see what it was like to be a professional. Even at 16 he was turning heads on the range. The sound that was made when he hit the ball was like nobody else out there and he was the amateur. So at 16 his journey had already begun. Rory was in paradise, playing golf every day and gaining experience by the hour. He was a warrior in training, waiting to be unleashed on the battlefield. At 18 years old, he'd helped Ireland to win the European Amateur Team Championship at Western Gales Golf Club in Scotland. This time with 20-year-old future Open champion Shane Lowry as one of his teammates, and with McElroy as tied individual leader in the initial stroke play rounds. It was Ireland's first title in the championship since 1987. McElroy was being blessed, and invites were flying in across all the world. He made the cut on the European tour for the first time as a 17-year-old at the 2007 Dubai Desert Classic. He had to forego prize money of 7,600 euros due to his amateur status. So things were starting to look good for Rory, and bypassing that scholarship opportunity was starting to pay off. But things would only get better. In August 2006, he won the European Amateur Championship at the Biella Golf Club in Milan, Italy, sending him to the top of the world amateur rankings. Things were moving at a fast pace now. Thanks to his world ranking and recent wins, he was invited to play at the 2007 Open Championship at Carnoustie, one of the hardest tests in golf, and a test that would surely see what McElroy was made of. He opened up with a first round of 68, three under par and would finish in the competition plus five overall, which was enough to claim the silver medal for the highest finish in amateur. So McElroy was coming to an end of his amateur career now, and it was only a matter of time before the money started rolling in. But until then, he had one more amateur competition to play in. It was the 2007 Walker Cup, held at the Royal County Down. But things didn't really go as planned for Rory. He halved his morning foursomes and lost to Billy Horschel in singles. 
On the second day, he lost his morning foursomes, but managed redemption in singles, beating Mahershal. But that wasn't enough for the British and Irish team as they lost by one point. This would mark the end of Rory's amateur career. He still had no equipment sponsor and was still using whichever clubs he wanted. His first big sponsor came from Jamariah's Resort and Hotels, which is undisclosed but predicted to be around the 100 million mark. So before even entering a professional competition as a pro, Rory was set for life. In his first year, Rory wasn't messing around. He finished third at the Alfred Dunhill Links and the next week came fourth at the Open de Madrid. With these results, he became the youngest affiliate member in the history of the European Tour to earn a tour card. He earned £250,000, finished 95th place in the Order of Merit and was the highest ranked associate member. In 2008, in his first full season, Rory was getting calls from Tiger, asking him to play at the Hero World Challenge. Rory politely declined and showed his loyalty to the European Tour. It was a roller coaster year, but full of experience. He entered the World Top 200, lost in his first playoff of the European Masters, made six top tens, and finished the year inside the World Top 100. Even with no wins, this was a very successful learning curve. A few months into the new year, Rory picked up his first win at just 19 years old at the Dubai Desert Classic. It was a star-studded field beating the likes of Justin Rose, Henrik Stenson and Sergio Garcia, proving he had what it takes. Barely legal to drive and barely legal to drink. This was an astonishing feat. Things wasn't slowing down here though. With the Masters months away and now breaking inside the top 50 in the world, this granted him into the 2009 Masters. He finished an incredible tie 20th and at this point, fully had the world's attention. After being fully committed to the European Tour so far, Rory started dipping his toes into the PGA Tour ahead of the US Open. He managed to place tied 10, his first top 10 in a major, and one step closer to his lifelong goal. He continued to play in America ahead of the PGA Championship before returning back to Europe. To finish his season off, he came second behind Lee Westwood in the race to Dubai. Pretty amazing considering he'd balanced two tours this year. After a very busy year, I think Rory realised he had to commit to one tour. He was now number nine in the world, and the ball was in his court and future in his hands. He decided to join the PGA Tour for the 2010 season. Top 10 finishes were becoming the norm for Rory but he just couldn't quite get it over the line. It turns out Rory was suffering from a sore back. Nothing too concerning, but he decided to take two weeks off. Upon his return, it seems like listening to his body was exactly what he needed. On May the 2nd at the Quail Hollow Championship, Rory won his first PGA Tour event after shooting a new course record of 62 in the final round. He became the first player since Tiger Woods to win a PGA Tour event prior to his 21st birthday and gave him a two-year exemption on tour. He continued to break records. After shooting 9 under par at the Open Championship at St Andrews, shooting 63 on the opening day, the lowest first round score in over 150 years of history and tying the course record. He went on to finish tied third and pushed him up to seventh in the world rankings. It was the same story at the PGA Championship as Rory's weaknesses started to unfold. He missed a three foot putt on the 15th green to fall out of the lead and then narrowly missed a birdie putt on the 18th green to leave him one stroke out of the playoff between Bubba Watson and eventual winner Martin Keimer. Although on paper a great season, Rory was not happy with his finishes and still was chasing down that first major. But what he had gained was a ton of experience and he was about to gain a whole lot more. In the miserable Welsh countryside, Europe hosted the 2010 Ryder Cup. The teams battled all the way through to Monday and Rory managed a clutch half point to help Europe win the Ryder Cup. After the Ryder Cup, Rory announced that he would return to play full-time on the European Tour. He promised to play over 10 competitions per year in the US, but wanted to be closer to his friends, family and new girlfriend, Caroline Wozniacki. The decision seemed to have been the right one, as top 5 finishes became more and more common. Rory was in the form of his life, and the field feared him like a prime Tiger Woods. He arrived at Augusta as the favourite, and as confident as ever. But little did he know, one of the biggest upsets golf has ever seen was on the horizon. In the first round, Rory shot a bogey free, seven under par to take the lead on the first day. He was the youngest player in history to lead the tournament after day one. On Friday, he shot 69 to lead by two strokes to Jason Day, and on Saturday shot 70 to finish 12 under par going into the final round, four strokes ahead of four challengers. See now, the Masters is not only won by the best golfer that weekend, it's also won by great minds. This course will tangle you up, twist you up, and spit you right back out with no respect. We've seen it happen so many times over the years. With a four shot lead, Rory must have been feeling comfortable. But one mistake after another, there was nothing any caddy could do in a situation to calm you down. He shot the worst round in history by any professional golfer leading after the third round of the Masters, a record that still haunts him today. He finished with a round of 80, 
and ended up tied 15th at four under par. You can only imagine how low McElroy was after that Masters. Humiliated by the world, and every last breath sucked out of him. But when true warriors get knocked down, they get right back up and fight, as the battle may be lost, but the war is still there to be won. June 2011, Congressional Country Club. Rory McIlroy arrives and the world media are there to greet him. The pressure is as big as ever, but Rory seems different. He's poised, calm, quiet and just keeping himself to himself. Overnight, rain softened the fairways and greens and allowed for lower than average scoring for the first round. Rory took advantage. Now with a skip in his step, he now looked angry, like he had a point to prove and nobody was about to get in his way. He carded a bogey free 65, six under par, three ahead of two major winners, Yi Yang and Charles Schwarzel. Rory was the headline story once again on Friday. He continued his good form breaking several US Open scoring records in the process. McElroy would become the first player in history of the championship to reach a score of 13 under par at any point in the tournament. Conditions continued to allow good scoring on Saturday, with several players taking advantage. McElroy was in no mood to relinquish his lead and became the first man to ever reach 14 under par at the US Open. With the Masters still very fresh in his mind, Rory was as focused as ever. He put on one last show for the crowd, proving the Masters was just a blip. McElroy accomplished the rare feat of shooting all four rounds of golf under par in a US Open. This had occurred only four times previously in the history of the event. With one deep breath and a sigh of relief, Rory McElroy from boy to man was now a major champion. After putting absolutely everything into that US Open win, Rory took a month off from playing golf. He had pushed his body to the limit and was now eyeing up his next win. And that win came with a bunch more. 2012 was a spectacle, a full year of pure dominance across two tours. He entered 22 events over the course of the year, placing in the top 10 10 times and winning four events, one being the PGA Championship in his second major victory. He also played a huge role in Europe winning the Ryder Cup and topped it all off winning the race at Dubai. He finally topped the World Golf Rankings, becoming the youngest person ever to do so, and also became the first player since Tiger Woods in 2005 to win more than four events in the season. At 22, he was also the youngest multiple major winner since Seve. Rory was peaking, and the sport had a new dominant force. At the start of the new calendar year, Rory split from long-term sponsor Jamariah Group and signed a 250 million deal with Nike for a 10-year clubs and clothing deal. McElroy was voted the third most marketable sports star in the world behind Messi and Neymar. So now with multi-millions in the bank and a shiny new set of clubs, all Rory had to do now was play golf. So the question at the time was, were Nike clubs the best on the market for Rory? Or were they just the richest? See, money talks. And after playing with Titleist his whole career, it was clear Rory had a preference. 2013 was a terrible year. With the pressure of impressing his new sponsors and a huge endorsement deal very public, Rory missed cuts and withdrew from many competitions. He did manage to bring it all together towards the end of the year when winning on the DP World Tour at his old sponsor's golf course though. Even though it wasn't the most successful year, Rory still had money coming out of his ears. He was earning that much money he started Rory McIlroy Incorporated just to manage his endorsements and royalties. So we can put that year down to having too much money and no motivation and just getting used to his new clubs. But when the doubters and naysayers rise up, that is when Rory blossoms. 2014 was his standout year and peak Rory McIlroy. His standout year didn't get off to a flyer though. In January, McIlroy was hit with a two shot penalty that cost him a competition by one shot at the HSBC Championship. In March, he lost in a playoff at the Honda Classic after leading all four rounds and then shooting plus four on the back nine of the final round. But this just made Rory even hungrier. He arrived back in the UK to more familiar soil. It was the BMW Championship at Wentworth. He carried a six under par 66 final round to beat Thomas Bjorn, who started the day seven strokes clear of McElroy. The win was Rory's first on either of the two major tours for 18 months. The swing was looking good and the putts were dropping. It had been a while since we've seen Rory look this good and people were excited. A month later and Rory was back in England. It was a 2014 Open Championship at Royal Liverpool and conditions were perfect. He topped the leaderboard after days one and two but by the weekend the conditions had completely flipped. Rory was now pushed up against a wall and had Ricky Fowler and Sergio Garcia backing him into a corner looking for their first major wins. McElroy did get a little twitchy on the back nine but kept calm. He'd been here before 
and he could now learn from his mistakes. Rory stayed strong, birded 16, and then could enjoy his walk down 18. Every young kid has had that putt for the Open Championship on the practice putting green, but that kid was now making it a reality. He became the second golfer ever after Tiger Woods to win the silver medal and the gold medal at the Open Championship. He also joined Jack and Tiger as one of the three golfers since 1934 to win three majors by the age of 25. But this time Rory didn't take time off after winning. He'd made that mistake before. He was now about to ride the wave and dominate the seas. Arriving in the US with the claret jug in his hands, it was on to the next one and back to business. He started the final day of the WGC Bridgestone Invitational three shots back. He looked as calm as ever and his swing looked smooth. He went two shots clear and once again beat Sergio Garcia by two shots in back-to-back -back competitions. This was Rory's first WGC Championship. Just one week later, Rory would beat Phil Mickelson by one shot to collect his fourth major trophy and second PGA Championship. After the victory on his own course, Jack Nicholas went on to say that Rory is an unbelievable talent. I think Rory has what it takes to win 15 or maybe even 20 majors. And that's kind of what we all thought too. In the new year, Rory would split from his relationship with Wozniacki. It was right at the peak of both sports stars' careers, and both agreed it just wasn't going to work. Rory then became the new face of the Tiger Woods game, and now to be branded the Rory McIlroy PGA Tour. So here we arrive at the peak of the mountain, the very top of Rory's career. From here he went on to win another 20 competitions and now has a total of 32 professional wins. He's already going down as a golf hall of famer and the greatest golfer of the last 10 years. But why do we still feel slightly empty? When you're being critical of a player of such high ability, you need to be careful not to say the wrong thing. Over the years we know Rory's putting has let him down and not got him over the line as much as it should have. I don't think he was meant to be on that god tier with Tiger and Jack. He's more suited to that second tier with Mickelson and Player. But I think we can all agree Rory has another 10 plus years of good golf left and another major championship is undoubtedly going to happen, even if we have been waiting eight years already. But if it can just figure out Augusta and get a green jacket, then maybe Rory McIlroy could enter that god tier. But after now working with Brad Faxon, Rory's putting has improved massively. He's happy at home with his new family and all of this makes winning just that little bit easier. He'll never be an underachiever, because he's already done it all. Rory just wants to see that Masters win, just like we all do. And then, and only then will Rory McIlroy's golfing career be complete.